Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know, there's a saying in life, familiarity breeds contempt. You see someone enough and you forget who they were, right? You forget what they've done. You take them for granted, right? It's only when you look back and remember that you realize what you're overlooking. Now, people are sometimes surprised when I say that the most dominant stretch that I've seen a fighter have, right? Perhaps other than Mike Tyson, in the 1980s, right, was Roy Jones. In fact, I think Jones might even be more dominant, right? Roy Jones in the 1990s was absurd. The guy was running through the best fighters in boxing, and he was making them look unqualified, right? The guy beat James Tony. This is the same James Tony who would later beat Evander Holyfield. Right? He beat James Tony and he made it look easy. The guy fought Virgil Hill, great fighter, and stops him on a body shot. Right? I'm just telling you, you see Roy Jones now. I know to a lot of young people, he's a guy who lost to Enzo Macarinelli and stuff like that. Okay, fine. Understand. The fighter in the 1990s left no doubt. Right? He beats Bernard Hopkins. He beats Vinny Pazienza. As you're watching these fights, Jones was just a freak athlete. Here he was in the ring against other professional athletes, guys you thought were pretty tough, pretty much in shape. And Jones just looked much faster. Jones just seemed to hit much harder, right? There's a round, according to one of these outfits, Punch Stats or CompuBox, in his match against Vinny Pazienza. Now, Pazienza was a guy who came to fight. Vinny was no wallflower. He was trying to mix it up with you. But there's a round where, according to the punch counting agency. Vinny Pazienza did not land a punch. Right? We talk about the phrase freak athlete. There was no doubt in the 1990s that Roy Jones was a freak athlete who was the best in the sport pound for pound. So they reached a point where Roy Jones, right, who had the middleweight title at one point, was a WBC, IBF, and WBA super light heavyweight champion. Right? And Roy Jones decided that he was going to fight the heavyweight champion. Now, I've watched boxing a long time. I just have to tell you, this is one of those moments the sport needs to remember. It was crazy at the time. Right? Right? light heavyweight, 175. You've got to be kidding me. He was going to fight John Ruiz, a guy who had given Evander Holyfield all he could handle. Right? Well, to make a long story short, Jones gains the weight. The weigh-in is very curious because Roy Jones seems to be wearing far more clothes than he should be. According to folklore, Jones actually had things like coins on him because he didn't want people to know how much he actually weighed. As it was, Jones comes in weighing less than 200 pounds. Folks, the fight's not close. The fight's not close. Roy Jones, the light heavyweight champion, dominated John Ruiz, who was then the heavyweight champion. Jones was just too fast. 
He was just too elusive. Keep in mind, this is outside of the 1990s. This is in something like 2003. Simply put, Jones was too dominant. He became only the seventh boxer to win titles in four different weight classes. He did it by skipping the cruiserweight division. Think about it. Right? And he beat the heavyweight champion. This isn't creative scoring. As you watch the fight, you understand that boxing is the sweet science. Right? It's not the size of the man in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the man. Roy Jones was brilliant. Simply put, I've watched boxing a long time. It's one of the best accomplishments I've seen in the sport. Now that brings us to the current day. <clears throat> you know, other than boxing being the sweet science, the most true statement I've heard about boxing that seems to be proven time and time again is that styles make fights. Right? Styles makes fights. One guy can beat another guy. Then lose to a third guy. Guess what? The guy he beat might be able to beat that third guy. Thomas the Hitman Hearns dominated Roberto Duran in another fight history seems to have forgotten. I've never seen Duran dominated like that, KO'd early. Hearns, for some reason, couldn't beat Duran Barkley, who then lost to Roberto Duran. <laughs> you know, figure out everything. Well, let me say this. Right now, you have a unique time in boxing. It's unique. You have some heavyweight champs out there who are unproven, who have certain styles that to me show some holes in their game. In other words, some of these heavyweight champs are so vulnerable that I wonder whether some of the cruiserweight guys, <clears throat> Oxlander Usyk in particular, Maris Bredis, another guy, I wonder whether these guys could actually go up to heavyweight and beat these champs. Well, let's talk about a light heavyweight who has some of the attributes that Roy Jones had. He's not a freak athlete like Roy Jones, but I believe his style, and I know this sounds ridiculous, his style would be exactly the style needed to beat one of the heavyweight champs. Now, let me preface this by saying what I believe to be true here, and I understand it's a controversial opinion, right? I've heard Virgil Hunter say, hey, I want someone to prove to me that my fighter, Andre Ward, lost to Sergei Kovalev, right? Now, look, I have a lot of respect for Virgil Hunter, I'm not going to try to prove anything to Virgil Hunter. What I am going to say is what I've said here online. I thought Andre Ward lost that fight by at least a couple of rounds. That big comeback in the second half of the fight, I, I didn't see the big comeback. Understand, if you gave both guys six rounds, right? If you gave both guys six rounds, which I consider to be ridiculous, but if you did, Right? Kovalev would have won the fight because he knocked down Andre Ward. Right? One of those rounds is a 10-8 round. Ward, when he gets off the canvas, looks hurt to me. That's not a slip. Right? Of course, I have a hard time believing Kovalev only won six rounds. Right? That's six rounds with the knockdown. But, styles make fights. Andre Ward is completely fluent on the inside. Andre Ward can fight low. Right now, if you track the heavyweight division, you're going to see that there are periods of time 
where you have these men who were practically giants who were heavyweight champion right they used to call Jack Johnson who wasn't that big but who was big for the era the Galveston giant right the guy he loses to Jess Willard wow he's big right Primo Carnera he was a big man right look at guys like Ali Ali was like 6'3 right these guys aren't short George Foreman big George Foreman right Lennox Lewis looked huge the first time you saw him Vitaly Klitschko huge Vitaly Klitschko excuse me <laughs> Vladimir Klitschko huge today if you were walking down the street and if you saw Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder you would think huge maybe these guys don't weigh a lot but these are tall men right they're not 5'11 these guys are much taller than 5'11 right Tyson Fury huge but understand there's another side to heavyweight history isn't there right doesn't Jess Willard get his ass kicked by Jack Dempsey who hit harder than Rocky Marciano Mike Tyson an argument can be made that the best punch in history was Joe Fraser's left hook right I'm just telling you that there's a whole set of heavyweight champions who were shorter right things alternate if there are a bunch of tall guys out there and there's a guy who can get low and dish out punishment hit hard work the body get inside have the guy with the long reach suddenly have to deal with you right up on his body you want an example look at the Frank Bruno versus Mike Tyson fight Tyson gets inside Tyson's throwing uppercuts from down low Bruno doesn't look like he knows what to do with Tyson and understand Bruno was a guy with a pretty big punch right look at the first Ali Joe Fraser fight Ali had a great jab Joe Fraser dodges the jab gets inside is riddling Ali's body right it's coming in at angles where Ali can't back away from right Joe has him up on the ropes at times and Ali can't extend his arms Ali doesn't even get to dance much because Joe's cutting off the ring right now Andre Ward has the ability to get inside Andre Ward has the ability to smother you there was a time in Andre's career where he was accused of headbutting people people like Mikael Kessler right because Andre Ward would get so close to you he would be like the shirt I'm wearing right you know the guys just so under your chin and stuff that you couldn't get him off of you his head seemed to be right here right the guy would stay right here look at the Alan Green fight Andre Ward gets inside and he never leaves right the round would end then the next round would start Andre Ward would again get inside and never leave right he's the friend on your sofa who you're saying hey uh, I'm going to bed now dude you got to get out of here and the guy is still hanging around now I want people to look closely at Deontay Wilder yes I'm trying to be a troublemaker here Deontay Wilder fights Gerald Washington his last fight let's be as recent as possible and Gerald Washington in his best moments is getting low now Washington's a tall guy himself but Washington is bending down he's getting low and he's throwing jabs to Wilder's body what I want people to do is to look at the pacing of the fight 
right, as Washington gets low and plans his entry point, Wilder is completely unable to get off. That fight's not frantic. Wilder's not landing a lot of punches, right? Washington's not under siege. Yes, he gets stopped in like the fifth round. Knockouts cause amnesia. Folks, to get to the fifth round, you need to get through the first four rounds. I want people to focus on the first four rounds. Right? My point to you is that Andre Ward, who did publicly mention that he was thinking about retiring, right? In my opinion, Andre Roy, uh, Andre, <laughs> Andre Ward, needs to think about Roy Jones, what he accomplished. And he needs to think about the idea that seems crazy today, but it's not crazy because it's already happened, that he as a light heavyweight champion could conceivably challenge and fight a heavyweight champion and actually beat him. Now let me let me just say this, right? Wilder has one of boxing's best punches. You don't want to be on the receiving end of a Wilder straight right hand. But Wilder needs room to operate. The other thing, too, is, you know, Wilder has gone late in fights, right? He goes the distance against Bermain Stiver. But understand, Wilder hasn't been in the ring with the guy as athletic as Andre Ward is, right? I think the public might not fully grasp that Kovalev might be a tougher matchup for Andre Ward than Deontay Wilder, right? If Ward gets inside and is able to neutralize Wilder's straight right hand, and if he gets low and forces Wilder to throw hooks and try to get low to match him, name me the fight where Wilder has gotten low and has looked effective. Let me also say this too, right? If Andre Ward is at the stage of his career where he's even considering retirement, I want him to think about Ray Robinson, who was considering retirement, then decided he had one more mountain to climb. The light heavyweight champion, Joey Maxim, right? This might surprise people. But Bernard Hopkins was practically retired when he decided he had one more mountain to climb. The then light heavyweight champion, Antonio Tarver. Right? If I'm Andre Ward, and I'll agree, Andre would have problems against a fighter like Joseph Parker. Right? Because Andre coming inside on Parker would wake up Parker. Right? And Parker's the abominable snowman, right? If you wake up Parker, you don't want to deal with that. Right? You want to keep Parker asleep. I agree, Parker would be a problem. I agree, Anthony Joshua would be a problem. I agree, Vladimir Klitschko would be a problem, even though Klitschko doesn't fight that well inside. But, Deontay Wilder, Andre Ward, Let's just say I'd love to see that fight happen. Keep in mind, too, Ward can fight lefty. If Ward wanted to take away Deontay Wilder's jab, well, it throws a good jab. He could fight lefty and throw him off just like Danny Jacobs just threw off Golovkin. So, to the powers that be, right? And keep in mind, Ward's next fight, I'm, I'm taking Kovalev in that fight, right? But to the powers that be, based on styles, is it possible that Ward 
might be having more problems at light heavyweight against Kovalev, the wrong style matchup for him, than he would have at heavyweight against Deontay Wilder. Food for thought. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. A few years ago, I was talking about wanting to see Bernard Hopkins against David Hay. And, of course, I got a bunch of comments here online telling me that I was crazy and stuff like that. Okay, fine. But as you laugh at the concept, right, the concept of a light heavyweight challenging a heavyweight champion, just remember, folks, that a light heavyweight champion successfully did so within the last 20 years, right? The idea is not as crazy as it sounds. How did the great Bob Fitzsimmons, right? How did the great Roy Jones win in their careers a middleweight title and then beat a heavyweight champion, right? Research James Tony's career, right? Tony wins a title and then gets stripped because of a failed drug test. But understand, what it proves is that guys can jump weights and can hang against heavyweights. Now, if we're in an era of big men at heavyweight relying on big punches, how certain are you that they aren't vulnerable to a shorter guy? at least shorter than them, right? A shorter guy who can get low, who can work the body, who knows how to deal with pacing, who knows how to avoid long, straight right hands, right? Andre Ward, before you think about retiring, if you get by Kovalev, rather than deal with Badu Jack, right? The light heavyweight division's loaded. Rather than deal with Badu Jack, rather than deal with Adonis Stevenson, rather than deal with Kovalev again, right? Why not consider boxing's biggest prize, the heavyweight championship? I think Ward beats Deontay Wilder, right? Let's hope that fight gets made because I'm sure the odds would be as ridiculous as possible. I'm sure many people would say, this fight's an absurdity. Tell that to John Ruiz. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.